Madam Chair, we want our wars to be shorter and more effective. And we believe that the number of casualties in wars in general is too high at the moment. We believe that fear is an essential element that leads to bad decisions, to hesitations, and we know that one moment of hesitation makes the difference between life and death when you are on the battlefield. In my speech, I'm going to explain how fear leads to bad decisions and how this increases the chances of the war to be longer and less effective. I'm going to explain how fear impedes on war effort and I'm going to explain why by not doing this we actually harm the dignity of soldiers and why we have a duty to, do, to offer them a dignified death instead of letting them die as cowards on the battlefield after they might, make, may, might have made have a bad decision. Sorry. Before that, let's explain the model. We believe that, how are we going to do that? We believe that all soldiers during the war will be, uh, will be confronted with this mechanism by which we eliminate this feeling from all soldiers who have to go on the battlefield and who, walk, who actually have to fight on the battlefield. Assuming this technology exists, of course, we also assume that the, this process is reversible. So at the end of the fight, they will get the, their feeling of fear back because we, try, no, because we, of course, we respect their right to fear. Also, we believe that... <laughs> Thank you. You said clarification? Yeah. Yes. What if a soldier doesn't want to lose fear? Yes. We believe that when soldiers go on the battlefield and accept to fight for their country, because they will know that this process will happen, they basically offer their implicit consent to, the, to this removal of fear. So we don't think that uh, we actually impede the right not if they don't want to uh, be removed from this uh, to, to, for this from this feeling of fear to be removed, they will just not go to war. This is it's not like they have a right to go to war or something like that. Okay, firstly, why fear leads to bad decisions? We read that when you're overwhelmed by emotions, when your brain is covered, when you, know, you have adrenaline pumping in your brain, when your hand is shaking on the gun, you get in a survival mode. This means, to, this means that you are prone to ignore the rules of engagement. What are the rules of engagement? Are the rules that the generals, that those that are superior to the commandants, set as the rules that you have to follow as a unit, as a team, such as you don't fire until you're fired at, or you don't kill civilians. By, by the fact that you get into that survival mood, you are covered by fear, this, which means that you are prone to neglect those rules of engagement. Why is that wrong? Because rules of engagement have two purposes. First of all, to minimize collateral harms. When you are prone to, to neglecting the rules of engagement, you might fire at a civilian because you fear that he might shoot at you, even though you, you, you know that you shouldn't do that, because you are afraid that you will die. With that, because you don't respect these rules of engagement, the risk of casualty in, is higher. Secondly, because those, these rules of engagement are written objectively. They are written by people who are there in their country, who are not actively participating in the war, and who can aid think about think strategically long term about what what the war is about what are the implications of the war b they can they have all the big picture not only what's happening on that particular battlefield but also what's happening in that particular war in the country in the entire yeah. world and thirdly they can think about all aspects such as they can make a, a cost benefit analysis because sometimes in a war it may be worth sacrificing a unit for the whole, uh, for, 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 in order to win that war, no thank you. So I believe that by neglecting these rules of engagement, you make you you harm a lot the 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 the, the, the chances of a winning for that particular unit of that war. Secondly, fear impedes war effort because it makes you a second guess orders. We believe that listening to orders is essential. Why? Because every time you receive an order, you'll get it through your own uh, filter of judgment now when you are covered by fear. In instead of just doing it because your commander in chain told you, you have to do that because otherwise you will die or your, uh, your colleagues will die or our country will lose this war or will lose this battle. We believe that when you second guess orders, this leads to hesitation and in wars, only one second of hesitation is crucial and can define the result of that war. We want to eliminate this hesitation and we want to, to, take, uh, to eliminate any chance for that hesitation to happen. Fear leads to hesitation. 
Second point, we read that it affects the dependence on the other. What's happening in war is that these people, soldiers, go there knowing that they might die, knowing that they might not never return to the ones they love, so they, make, they befriend other soldiers. You create this feeling of camaraderie, of friendship between the soldiers, of trust. Uh, which, which, me, which makes people uh, trust in the other by, by the fact that they know that I'm, my chances of survival are higher if you also respect the, the same orders that I have to respect. Because we trust our commander to take the best decisions so that we, we would, our survival would be ensured and the entire, no thank you, and the entire uh, result would be better. Thirdly, the power of self-sacrifice. We believe that when you ha when we eliminate fear, you, this uh, leads to acts of bravery. We believe that we need this in a war because this uh, increases the efficiency of actions by the fact that you are more prone to doing the right thing, to be willing to die for your country, even though uh, in other situations you might say, of course I don't want to die, I want to survive because I'm a human being, and B, this can inspire other soldiers to do the same thing and other people when you come back in your country and be, uh, you are seen as a hero. It's important to preserve this feeling of self-sacrifice and to make, uh, send them the message that they are dying for the greater good. Sec thirdly point, how this, uh, how this uh, it's important for the dignity of soldiers. Now people die covered in fear. Those that make mistakes, they, they die, they're dying feeling fear of death, maybe feeling ashamed for what they've done. When you eliminate fear, when they're going to die, you're going to offer them a, a dignified death because they're no longer being uh, gonna be covered by the fear of what's going, gonna happen next. The only feeling that they're going to have is the feeling that they have done all that they could for their country by respecting the orders of their superiors, by respecting the trust in their, camer in, in their comrades, in other soldiers, and we believe that we have a this duty towards them to ensure them a dignified death to, in order to make them heroes for our country. Because we want shorter wars, because we don't want hesitation, and because we offer, want to offer them a dignified death, please propose.